Resting on my countertop Sunday morning I forgot What it's like to lose a friend Yesterday How it seemed so far away And I've said all I can say So I'm in North Dakota and I'm currently camped outside of Theodore Roosevelt National Park, which is behind the camera. And then I'm on top of a, an overlook right now, uh, boondocking, and I got a really cool view. And the sunset's gonna be that way, so I'm gonna have a really cool sunset. I camped here last night and I was gonna make the video, but I drove from Pennsylvania and I was tired and I didn't really feel like making a video. So anyway, I'm just gonna do a little, another overview I did a month ago when I bought the camper. Now I'm just gonna do what I, what I changed along with the truck. Uh, like solar, just racks in the back, storage, just stuff like that, nothing insane. And then go over some stuff that I'm hopefully gonna change or whatnot in the future. But yeah, so I'll be full timing in this for a while and give you guys a little uh, new tour. All right, so this is the view from the back of the camper. And there are campers down there. There's a fifth wheel and a class C and stuff. But over there is Theodore Roosevelt National Park. And this is the truck and truck camper. So on the back, all I did was add this this rack, and then I also made brackets for my tailgate, which I'll show you some iPhone clips right now. So uh, I did those brackets because I wanted to keep my tailgate for uh, when I take the camper off. I want to be able to put the tailgate up and be able to have access to my truck bed and not have stuff fly out. So uh, I don't know how often I'll be taking it off, but better than not having it at all. And then. For the rack, I just put like my chairs and stuff back there, my foldable table, which is right here, and then leveling blocks and stuff like that. So, and then over here, we've got the power station. So it's a Pecron E3000. It's 3000 kilowatt hours and it's got a 2000 watt inverter. So I would have loved to have done something like that was tied into the camper and, and uh, like a Victron system, but I didn't feel like spending the money because this is a lot cheaper. And I also didn't want something that was dedicated to this truck camper because it's a 1996 and I don't know necessarily how long I'll keep it or if everything's going to work properly for super long. So I didn't want to invest all this money into the camper where this I can at least uh, use for any other camper or take to the beach or just go tent camping or, or whatever I want, use it at the house. So um, more multi-purpose than having something dedicated to the truck camper itself. And then I did add uh, motion lights there's two on the back and then one on the side then i have 400 watts of solar which i'll show you in a minute but first let's go on the inside so i really didn't do all that much again i didn't want to put all that much money into it um, but i did all new carpeting it looks a lot nicer it was like a light blue color kind of like the the couch like a lightish blue gray color <laughs> um but yeah so i did all new carpeting I also did carpeting here and here. And then I didn't do anything to the bed except for that uh, outlet. And then I got my little kid camo color. So I was gonna do like white or black, but with how hot it's gonna be some nights and me sweating, camo is the way to go, it'll hide it. So yeah, that's all I did up front other than like reseal the roof and solar and all that fun stuff. So for the kitchen, uh, I think the only thing that I did was this peel and stick backsplash. Uh, we had white in my old Class A, but I went with gray. I think it hides the, the dirt and grime and stuff a little bit better. Um, we'll see how long that holds up to be true. And then in here, I got a Max Air fan. And this was actually in the Class A, and I switched it to this because the uh, well, this never had a fan and I'm selling the Class A and I feel like buying a $400 fan again. So just nice to have some air pulling in and out. And then down here, we also added an outlet by the couch. So that way when I'm working, um, I don't have to run an extension cable to here. Cause originally this was the only outlet in the entire truck camper. So again, we added one up by the bed to charge my phone at night and then over here for, for working and stuff like that. So, um, then I actually have a bunch of extra space. I've only been on the road for, I mean, what, four days now, but, um, that bin is full and this bin is full with all my work stuff, but, um, I have a whole extra bin here and then there's actually a bunch of extra room in there. And then the pantry probably gonna look like a mess. Yeah. So stuff flies around because it's not full right now. Um, but 
does the job. I actually, I need to load it up more so shit doesn't go flying. And then I got the fridge kind of loaded up with energy drinks and stuff, but I gotta go food shopping. I didn't know how much the fridge was gonna hold, so I didn't want to overshop. And then the only thing that is actually too small, I would say, is this little pantry, but everything else I have plenty of room. So, yeah, that is the inside of this. Again, all I did was carpet, outlets, the fan, and I think that's it. And like I said, I'll show you the solar on the roof, but I really didn't want to spend a lot of money on this. Um, I really just wanted to make sure everything was good. Like I resealed the roof, I flushed the, the water system, I flushed the, the tank system and stuff like that, made sure everything worked. Um, but yeah, so I'll show you the roof and then I'm just gonna chill and camp for the rest of the week. All right, so I'm in the hatch right now, up by the bed. So I've got, they're all ZAMP solar panels. So I have a 100 watt in front of the AC, I have a 100 watt behind the AC that you can't see, and then I also have 100 watts on each side. So uh, with the sun casting a shadow on one side or the front, I should be covered, which is kind of why I spaced it out. And then I have the sides wired together and then the front wired together. So I should be getting sun at least on two panels at all times. But yeah, so it's nice. It was with uh, this being fiberglass, I didn't have to screw and do into the fiberglass for the side panels. These front ones I did um, because I just didn't trust it because I had like a five inch bracket or like a four or five inch bracket right there. So I just didn't trust it. So I screwed these down. But yeah, and then there's the Max Air fan. And then yeah, just the uh, dope ass view up here. It's really cool at sunset because the sunset comes from the back of the camper. All right, so there's two things so far that I know already bug me and are gonna bug me in the future. So the first being that I wish I could go straight from the driver's seat of the truck into the camper without actually getting out of the truck, kind of like how a van would be. Um, and originally I was gonna buy a Ford Transit and I backed out the day I was supposed to go buy it. I already put a, a deposit on it. Um, and I backed out because I wanted a truck that way if I wasn't living on the road, um, I could have a normal vehicle to go to the store, or go to the beach or just have a normal vehicle that wasn't a fully decked out camper van or Ford Transit um, all the time when I didn't need it. So I knew, I knew that going into it, but um, it would be really nice when you're camped at like sketchy spots or get somewhere late at night um, or even if you're at a national park or somewhere and you want to cook lunch or and you pull over to the side of the road, it'd be nice to not have to get out. So sounds dumb, but would be nice. And then the second, which I already kind of hit on was so many bugs. Um, I wish I had a permanent like battery system, kind of like how I had in the class A where um, now I have to pull the generator out, plug it in, plug in the solar cables, then plug in the solar cables to the generator and it's just like a little process. It only takes two minutes, but it would be nice if I could just hop out of the truck, hop in the camper, and make coffee or make a smoothie or whatever. So, yeah, it's really not the end of the world. I am gonna try to fix the second issue, which is the, the power station thing. I'm gonna see if I can figure out a, a permanent solution or like mainly permanent, because I'm still gonna have to take it out to be able to charge it in the truck while I'm driving. Um, so, yeah, we'll see, but those are the two main issues. I was gonna go to the north end of the park, but it's about 60 some miles away. And I gotta come back down. And from looking at all trails and stuff, it pretty much looks the same as the south end. So I really didn't feel like spending the money or the time to drive over an hour there, hour back and the gas. So I'm gonna head to Montana, gotta go to Billings, gotta get the fuel filter changed in the truck. There's actually two. It's like 250 bucks, which is ridiculous. And then from there, I'm gonna check out the mountain range that is the Absaraka Wilderness, which I've actually already been to, and then Custer Gallatin National Forest. Um, so like northeast of Yellowstone. So yeah, I got like a four hour drive to Billings, gonna work out, get the fuel filter changed, and then set up camp. All right, so I'm at a way station right now for like tractor trailers. And I know you guys can't see, but up there, I'm 11,120 pounds. I'm a lot heavier than I thought I was. I thought I was maybe like 10, 10, 5. So good to know for bridges and stuff like that. 11,120 pounds. So in case you care, I care. It's good to know for me, but on my way to Montana still, but 
I'm happy there was a freeway station.